with your miracle. But what I'm talking about is higher than physical miracle. Verse 33. Who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lion? Is this, a, a, is this, is this signs and wonders? Is this miracle? Okay, the next verse. They quench what? Violence of fire. Escape the edge of sword. Out of weakness. We are they made strong. Was violently in fight. Turned to flight. The arms aliens. Go ahead. Go ahead. Women receive their dead. Raise. What? To life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. You go on and on, it was miracle. These are levels of powerful miracles. They opened the Red Sea. They did all kinds of things, but look at verse 40. The last verse of that place. He said, God, having what? Provided some better thing for us. Sir, what better thing we God has God provided than all these signs and wonders? What is it? These miracles, they are very good. As long as they are in the kingdom, it's children's bread. But there is something God has provided that is what? You are not hearing me now. That is what? If Bible says it's better, it's better. And that here you will go with your miracle. And you are going with a better turn. Oh, I didn't hear you. I am man. I didn't hear you. I am man. I didn't hear you. I am man. I prophesy you will go with your miracle. And you will go with a better turn. In every area of your life, you go with a better turn. What is that better turn that God has provided in the kingdom? Run to chapter 12 because I don't have time. Run to chapter 12. Let me show you the better turn. Which you cannot get if you did not offer yourself as a sacrifice. Or you did not invest your life. He said, we have foreseen, seen, we also recompense about, we so are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us what? Lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us. And let's run the race with patience, the race that is set before us. What is that better thing than quenching the mouth of lion? What is that better thing? That is better than opening of Red Sea. What is that better than St. Paul? The Bible tells us here, no, still leave me at verse, verse, verse 1. Still leave me at verse 1. We saw that we have the capacity, the strength to lay aside the weight and be set in sin. In the Old Testament, they didn't have the capacity. But in the New Christ has come. Oh, every load that is slowing you down, let them be crushed now. You can't run with a load. God said that the better thing I, I'm, I'm, I have I prepared for you. One of the better things is now the grace of God, because of the death of Jesus, you, you can say no to iniquity. Sansing cannot say no to iniquity. Even though he will do miracle. Are you with me? Are you with me? Verse 2. The better thing. I prophesy over you. You are going with miracle. But much more. You will do something better than miracle. Something better than opening of eyes. Something that better than the lame walking. That you will be able to yank off the load. Throw it aside. Alright? Looking unto Jesus. 
the author and finisher of faith. <laughs> Come. Come here. Stand. Looking, this is Jesus. The better thing, part of the better thing God has provided for us is in the New Testament and in the kingdom of God, we can be looking, fixing our eyes on who? Not on any man. Not on any G.O. Our benchmark, standard is who? What are you looking at Jesus for? You see, you have Jesus to look at. When you see Jesus, the way he speaks, you compare it with the way you speak. If it is not the same, you repent. If you see how he walks, as you are looking at him, the Holy Spirit reveals him to you. And you will be growing from glory to glory until you be like him. The better thing God has provided is, it's not only a miracle, you will become his son on earth. When people see you, they see who? That's why you offer yourself, you invest yourself to be transformed from who you are to his son. Somebody hearing me? Somebody hearing me? When this takes place, oh my God, this is all about worship. Now, if you become, you are growing, I know every one of us is working in progress. You see, as you are growing, you are becoming like Christ. Why? Because you have offered your life to God. Your pocket is not a problem. Your talent is not a problem. Your position is not a problem. Everything around you, you can easily drop it because you are growing in Christ. Oh, am I talking to somebody? God is saying, signs and wonders is children's bread. And you are going with it. But there is a better thing, becoming his son. And you can become his son if you have not invested your life on the altar. It is the Holy Spirit that transforms you. If I'm talking to you, say amen. amen. If you understand what I'm saying, say amen. amen. So when we are talking about spirit, I mean, a, a kingdom investment, this is where it starts. If you have not offered yourself and your self-will on the altar and allow the Holy Spirit to transform you and you are gradually, gradually becoming like Christ. You see, as old ministers, when you are young in the ministry, you can jump up and down and do, do all kinds of robust But as you are growing, you are getting matured. Eh? Well, the more you grow, the more you become like Christ. I know Isaiah Ebuba very well. I know him. Few, many years ago, when he comes to the church, sometimes he will, some I saw, as some, the speed he will run with from the altar. You know, uh, he, Everywhere will be electrified. But now, he had understood that running up and down is not the anointing. <laughs> he has grown and matured. I know that if I stand and I'm representing Christ, my will is on the altar. When I speak, I speak with a tongue of fire. There is no need running up and down. That's growth. And you can't come to this level if you have not offered yourself on the altar. Somebody hearing me. I prophesy over you, you will get better. I said you will get better. 
I said you will get better. Now, when you are becoming like Jesus, the Bible said, you will now call God my father. You know, every young man in Ibomi likes to pray. And when they want to talk, they say, my father, my father. Because they had it from their who? They, they had it from their father. I saw the young one, the one from Abuja as he's preaching. I said, this one is Isa Eguba. <laughs> because he was behaving like what? The father. Now, until you offer yourself, you, you cannot listen. Everybody in this place knows God as a father. But not everybody had gotten the revelation of God as a father. <clears throat> when the father has been revealed to you, the Bible said that is a, the spirit of the son moves inside your spirit to cry out, what? Abba, father. Now when you know that God is your father, No panicking. <laughs> you will be in the boat. And the boat was about to capsize. You know that will be a storm. What will, he, what will he be doing? He will be sleeping. Why? I have a father. I and my father, we are what? Why is he saying nobody can kill me? Nobody can do me anything? He knows that Jesus said I am hidden in my father and you are hidden in me and i am in you before you now can get me you start from god after dealing with god you deal with jesus before you get to my father it is a revelation it is a revelation it's not a father father it's a revelation and i pray in this meeting you know god will reveal himself as a father unto you no wonder they put Peter in prison. <laughs> he just entered into this sleep. He said, I have a father. That was the secret of the little church. Can I hear you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Let me, this time, uh, let me give you one illustration. And we go. Look at Noah. Let's look at Noah. In Genesis 6, 4, 14, God told Noah, make an ark. In verse 22, Noah did as God commanded him. I checked my record very well. Noah was about 490 years when God told him to make the ark. And he preached 420 years. No convert. You didn't hear me. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said now? Nobody listened to him. And the frustration did not stop him from making the ark. Ibomi as a whole. And everyone that is here. Can you tell me how much it took Noah to construct the ark? And by the vision you are shouting from, you are making us to understand, is that God wants Ibomi and 
you know, the children of God across to build an ark for Nigeria. Am I right? It is expensive. It takes money. It's not child's play. But Bible told us that Noah got some trees from his farm and he built the ark. And then God commanded Noah to enter into the ark. The people didn't believe him. Uh, including those who was working daily in the ark. They only collected their daily pay. And they didn't listen to Noah. <laughs> no. It becomes dangerous when your workers <laughs> are running around with you to get what they will eat. Not that they believe in what you are saying. No, you didn't hear me. <laughs> Uh, you didn't hear me. <laughs> All right, because of our time, you know, this time is, is, is good. Now, the, the <laughs> now, you see, my case is this. That Noah, God commanded Noah. That act accommodated all creatures, male and female. And he said also, make room for unclean, you see. So, when you are building an act, you will make room in your heart for unclean people, unbelievers. That's the heart of the kingdom. Are you with me? That's not where I'm going to. Noah and his family entered the ark. They came out. The first thing Noah did was to do what? To raise what? An altar. And when Noah raised an altar and set fire on the bone sacrifice, it produced aroma that troubled God. It was not the animals. The aroma. No. What troubled God was the man behind the altar. The man behind the altar has already sacrificed his life. Built an altar. And when God saw that a level of sacrifice and his investment, said, no, I'm this boy, this young man. And he kept aroma appeared before God and God said, never again will I curse the earth. Never again. When you put your life on the altar, any investment that did not bring aroma is an ordinary sacrifice. What is aroma? Aroma is the character and life of God. So whatever you are offering, or investment you are making in the kingdom that will not produce the life of Christ in people is a noise making. So it is important. May God give us understanding. I say may God give us understanding. And then he told Abraham. Abraham, he said, sir, take your son. Your only son. Go and offer him. You know, I follow that scripture. The way God does things, I don't understand. He told Abraham, take away Ishmael. Don't kill Ishmael. Just leave him. Take him away. But that one that will be huh, the fulfillment of the promise, the one that is in your heart, that's the one I want you to offer. Huh? You know, God gave him three days to consider whether he will change his mind. Eh? That's for why they travel for three days. Traveling for three days was allowing Abraham to see whether he will what? Change his mind. Change his mind. 
And the moment Abraham put that Isaac on the altar, I heard the Lord say, now I know that you fear me. This is the first place in human generation that God opened his eyes and looked at the man and said, you fear me. Please. This meeting is not a preaching meeting. It's a doing meeting. <laughs> it's what? <laughs> if you all the carpenters and all they are telling us, there are things they are telling us. And I pray that God will help us to do what we are hearing. Now, if we are able to do what we are hearing, Oh my God. The demons and the principalities and powers that are in Nigeria, they have overgrown binding and losing. You didn't hear me. <laughs> you didn't hear, did you hear what I said? These are human demonic personalities. Demons in, with human body come. It will take a demon inside of a person to chop out the ears, pull out the eyes, cut, and you still have the heart. That man is screaming. It didn't affect you. You must be a demon. Now, such people is not what you say, I bind you, I lose you. No. We have overgrown it. This kind of people, it, what is the antidote? To carry Baba himself. Christ himself. See why you must offer yourself so that he can be formed in you. Now, I heard the prophet say, he said, the battle of the gods. Am I right? Am I right? Now, you carry your God. Meet their God. Kai, are you with me? When they shoot, oh, and you didn't enter. They will know. Kake, no be leather. Are you understanding what I said? When they put you in prison, the following day, you are on the pulpit preaching. They will cool down. They will cool down. So, what is it that will lead us to this level of oppression? Is total investment of our life on the altar of God. You know, when you talk about investment, your money, your heart goes to money, 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 money. No. When you invest your life, the whole of your pocket, I told you yesterday, in the New Testament, they didn't waste much time to raise money. But they didn't lack money. I have asked you, how much will it take Noah to build an ark? That is how much it will take Ibomi and this ministry and those who believe in this ministry to build a place of refuge for the nation. I pray the Lord will help us. I said the Lord will help us. I said the Lord will help us. You will go with miracle. And you will go with something higher than miracle. That thing God called a better thing, you are going with it. The presence of God, you are going with it. The presence of Jesus, you are going with it. In the name of our Lord Jesus. The Lord bless you. I want us to stretch forth our hands towards our daddy and pray for him. More unction, more him filling of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That they will lift up our voice to pray for you this evening. That the Lord God that has called you in the vineyard will continue to keep you, sharpen you, make you useful in the name of Jesus Christ. More insight, more revelation. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Without much ado, I am privileged to invite another carpenter who is going to bless us with the word of life this evening. I am talking of no other person than Dr. Sam Alaha. He will be on the principle of strategic leadership. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, Prophet Israel Buba has been giving us this rare, and permit me if you will, rarest opportunities to be ministering in his conference, minister on his pulpit. I, I want you to celebrate the grace of God on this great servant of God. Let's give Jesus a mighty hand tonight. Tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's celebrate our mama, the woman of God, Pastor Mrs. Choice Elbuba. Let's give her also a very mighty hand. I, I tell you something. First week of December, not just this one that has passed. Prophet ministered in our place. Your administration changed us radically. And I am a testimony. The power of working on miracles through prophecy. Power of the word through teaching, preaching. Power of utterances. The meetings all change radically that those who who slack to come to meetings. By 7.30, prayers will start. By 7.30, people are hurrying to be saying, if I don't get there in time, I will not catch the place inside. So they are running and coming. Reason with, with this COVID-19 social distance that has entered church, we, 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 when we do social distance, we feel down and up and have big canopy outside. So people didn't want to sit on the canopy outside. They want to be inside to receive direct. <laughs> Come on, let's give Jesus a mighty hand. They are asking me to plead with him that he should come again. <laughs> yes, thank you. Father God, take glory over this ministry tonight. I met your servant bringing some lessons about investment and sacrifice. Bless this ministry. Bless this servant of God. Tonight, give us unctions by the Holy Spirit. Give us utterances. Bless this entire assembly. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, as you take your seats, we're going to be talking about principles of strategic leadership. I take it again. Principles of strategic leadership. This is a very peculiar conference dealing particularly on leadership. And there is a side of leadership called strategic leadership. A very dynamic one. A very visionary Strategic leadership is not passive. Strategic leadership is not dormant. Strategic leadership is both active. God said to Jerusalem, I have set watchmen on your wall. Strategic leadership is those watchmen set on the walls. And for our nation, Nigeria, strategic leadership, God is going to be raising you via this conference to become part of the strategic leadership. Watchmen over this nation, Nigeria. 
We usually have the political leadership, we have economic leadership, we have social leadership. But above all, in God's agenda, there is that spiritual leadership. Saddled with the responsibility of watching. Watchmen speak to God on the behalf of the nation. Watchmen speak to the nation from God. Prophet Israel Buba has been a great example of a watchman over this nation to us. He speaks to God as an intercessor over this nation. That there should be interventions. That there should be healings. That things should go well. He has this vision for the transformation of Nigeria. What is transformation? Transformation is talking about growth that comes by changes. It doesn't have to be negative changes. We have seen some negative changes for some time. It has to be positive changes. It doesn't have to be decreases. It has to be increases. It doesn't have to be minus. It has to be plus, plus. With that vision, the Holy Spirit led in his heart to call for this strategic leadership conference to both impact you with knowledge, impact you with information, and raise you to become a strategic leader. He might be speaking to the entire nation. Not every one of us will speak to the nation. Some may speak to states. Some may speak to local governments. Please don't be annoyed if you are to speak to... Don't be annoyed if you are to speak to me and what? And sometimes you have to speak to your congregation. Thank you for helping me out. But with that networking of God's army, understanding the vision, going with it, God's purposes will be accomplished. This conference is emphasizing national transformation. If there be any need for national transformation, it is now. Where right now, crisis has taken over Destruction reigns. Backward. Economic depression is here. Crime has increased. Insecurity has increased. The Boko Haram, the eye swap, the bandits and banditries, higher killers, militia. It's not one st state, it's all the states. It's no more the issue of north and south. It's happening in the north. It's happening in the south. May God grant us some creative wisdom in this moment to be able to come together and address the issues that are before us. So permit me to talk about the leadership required to take us out of trouble. In crisis time, in troublous times, in the times when things are going tough, what type of a leadership, what type of a leader? I may mention three examples in a general sense. Jesus, our example. Nehemiah. Daniel. But uh, permit me to center on our chiefest example, Jesus Christ. Can I hear someone say, Jesus Christ? Please, if that name doesn't send waves and send vibrations in your heart anymore, it's a sign you are beginning to backslide. Can I hear someone shout again, say, Jesus Christ? You know, chapter 4, Matthew, 
And I think chapter 4, Luke tempted him. And one of the gospels say he left him for a season. And at a very crucial moment of his life, when he was going to face the cross, which was God's agenda for him, Satan came again. And that thing is a crisis situation. And I wish to take you there. Yeah. The Reverend Allah, you preaching Easter. No, Easter has passed. But the message of Easter can never pass. It's just that there were crises, there were troubles. I tell you the truth. The, the faith, their commitment was shaken. And then let's see how Jesus handled such affairs. Because we are going to be learning principles of leadership. Leadership is particularly needed when the hour is tough. When things are riding smooth, everybody can lead. Everybody can lead. In the house, when there is food and there is money, and so, so anybody can lead. But it is when there is scarcity, when there are misunderstandings, then you need such a, a, a leadership of the man, the, 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 the husband, the father, that has been graced by God to come forth. So I want us particularly to study leadership principles in the context of where Jesus was facing some crises, some disasters, some attacks in the entirety of the ministry. Can we do that? When I ask you a question, you respond to me. I'd like to hear from you, choir. Can we do that? Can we do that, people of God? So Luke chapter 18, verse 31 to 34. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. If you are there, shout to me and say, I am there. Luke chapter 18, verse 31. He begins by saying, Then he took unto him the twelve. Let me hear somebody say 12. And said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and, in, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully and treated and spitted on. Yeah, let go. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. Let me hear some say good news. Historically speaking, prophet, Many theologians, you know, this is the last week of Jesus' life in the human body in that sense. On the earth. This is the last week. This is the beginning of the last week. And some theologians call that week the week of mercy. An agenda that was planned before the foundations of the earth. Very central in God's mind. The hour had now come. May our strategic leader, who had the power to discern the times, a strategic leader knows the times. You heard about the sons of Issachar. Their difference between they and every other person was that they had the ability to discern the times. So Jesus knew the hour for the crucifixion has come. It's important to God and important to the entirety of humanity. Actually from Adam to the last person that shall be born. This which I'm about to do is important to every one of them. And he didn't speak to the crowd. He didn't even speak to the 70. Notice the Bible says he took the 12. 
he separated the twelve. With everything that God was doing, he did more of a greatest investment in the twelve. So he took the twelve and then spoke to them. Can I hear someone say communication? He spoke to them clearly. The time for the fulfillment of what the prophet has spoken has come. It has to be at Jerusalem. Come, let's go. The goals were clear. What is a strategic leader? What are the principles? Number one, vision. Vision is talking of knowing the purposes of God and understanding the purpose so well. He understood the purpose of God, that redemption purpose. He knew it. It was planned before the beginning of the world. And now it was inaugurated in heaven before the beginning of the world. And now time home for the last lap of it. What has stayed for ages, what has stayed for centuries, what has stayed for millennia, now it's time for it to be fulfilled. It's the greatest thing. God's heart is here. Jesus' heart is here. Everybody's heart is here. The whole angels in heaven, their heart is here. He said, 12 very special people. He said, come, let's go. So far, he has manifested principles. Number one, vision. Number two, if you have a vision, you need to set the goals very clearly. In order for you to set the goals, there has to be planning. He has planned. We will go to Jerusalem. The goals are clear. Number one, when I go there, they will arrest me. They will hand me over to the Gentiles. The Gentiles will despitefully trouble me, spit upon me. They will crucify me. I will die. But he didn't stop there. Thank God he didn't stop there. He said, they will put me to death, but I shall rise up again. Very central, very critical that Jesus died and resurrected. That is the major difference between all religions. Every founder and every owner of a religion has died and has been buried. But the difference is that Jesus, who brought Christianity, died like every other man, every other person. But unlike every other man, on the third day, he rose again, broke the power of Satan, broke the power of death, broke the power of demons, broke the dominion of Satan, broke the dominion of hell, broke the dominion of the grave. Very unique, very peculiar. With all these principles, let's all look at verse 34. Can we get verse 34? That Luke 18. Verse 34. Please, if you are there, shout to me and say, I am there. Read it out loud. All of you with King James Version. Read it out loud. One, two, three, go. Very good, it's very good, very good. But can you do better? So that we will differentiate between we and uh, the other people. Can I hear you do it better? One, two, three, go. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. Mm. Understood not. Understood not. Knew not. There's going to be a problem here. This will bring problem. J 
Jesus is the leader in this organization. He has communicated. He has set the goals. He has pursued the vision. He has spoken well. But problem was with the followership. Usually we say, usually we say, everything rises and falls with leadership. Yeah, to a great extent, that is truth. Bossa, partial truth. Many things rise and fall with followership. I can prove it to you. God created angels, very perfect angels. God created angels. God is the leader. He created angels, very perfect. So the problem wasn't with God, the leader. The problem was with Lucifer, the follower. Again, when he created Adam, he created man perfect in his image. If he wanted something less, he would have done it. He wanted that perfection. His image, his likeness, his righteousness, completeness. Nothing lacking, nothing wanting. Adam, Eve. God was the leader. Adam and Eve follower. Problem was not with the leader. Problem was with the follower. Many a time, problem is with the follower. And Satan use it to wreck your followership, wreck your church, wreck your congregation. Then soon you begin to ask, God, did you call me? It looks to me as if God didn't call me. Have you come to that state before? Many a times, the problem is not with leadership. The problem is with followership. See another one here. This is what has been the mind of God. And look at how God separated these 12 and has so much invested into them. These are people who walk with Jesus about three and a half years now. These are people who slept around Jesus. These are people who had the toughest secrets that he taught. These are people who partook and shared his supernatural ministry. These are people who healed the sick, who cast out devils. These are the people who ate his bread two times. The one feeding 5,000 men, the one feeding 4,000, they, they ate all. There was nothing hidden from them again. There was nothing kept behind. And now let us move forward. We are going to Jerusalem. And the people didn't understand it. They did not. Your Bible say they understood none of this thing. And they didn't know it. Something that somebody didn't understand, he didn't know. How would he believe? This is the beginning of their unbelief. This 12 are. This is the beginning of their unbelief. At a critical moment like this, what quality of leadership do we need? It's a leader, what Jesus showed here, is a leader that has two things, tolerance and flexibility. Can I hear somebody say tolerance? And can I hear somebody say flexibility? Jesus was tolerant. Jesus was flexible. He didn't understand. To tolerate is to endear somebody who doesn't understand you. To tolerate is to allow. Not that you condone it, but you are allowing it. Tolerance is an act of faith. You are tolerating in faith. Perhaps God will intervene and these people may change. 
I've never heard that kind of revelation before. That you say, no, I carry things, including unclean. And in the heart of God, we should allow room for unclean people. How? How? You are not condoning the uncleanliness. You are allowing so that God will have an opportunity to walk in those people. Hi. Jesus demonstrated it. He has done a lot. He has the vision. He's casting the vision before them. He has set the goals. He has communicated. He wanted to mobilize them. Somebody say, mobilize. Oh, no, no, no. Somebody say, mobilize. Somebody say, mobilization. Leadership quality are seen. Jesus, he was a mobilizer. Will you speak things so that people can understand is so that they can come along with you. If this thing concerns you alone, there's no need to speak it out. Re reason for speaking to others is to get them to see the same thing so that they can move together. You are speaking to move people to a goal. You are speaking to move people to a task. You are speaking to move people to a vision, to a purpose of God. You are speaking to move people to an accomplishment. This conference is speaking to move us to one thing, national transformation. We are at a place where we have only one choice. Nigeria must change. They understood him not. To pastor a church, to lead a people, there are about seven kinds of people that are difficult to lead. You may know more than that, but just permit me with the ones I know. I say, how many kinds of people? Number one, those who are, those who can, who are easily discouraged. Number two, those who are easily disappointed. You hear somebody say, I'm a disappointed man, pastor. I'm discouraged, I'm going to leave this church. It's because of discouragement and disappointment people have been crisscrossing churches. Let me help you before you move to the next one. Because in every church you have enough reason to make you to be discouraged or to be disappointed. Sometimes God allows them deliberately so that you can grow. Even demons are growing. They have grown and passed the level of bind and loose. <laughs> I've never heard that. Hey! <laughs> okay, if you want to laugh, go ahead and laugh. <laughs> I'm telling you that I've never heard that. Demons in Nigeria, particularly, they have grown. They have passed that one. You say, bind that. I bind you. They'll be looking at you. <laughs> So, brother, sister, grow. Past the level of complaining, so and so has discouraged me from coming to this church. So and so has disappointed me. Pastor has disappointed me. So and so. And sometimes, what you call disappointment is not really a disappointment. It's just that you didn't know it enough. No pastor would del deliberately go out looking for how to disappoint members. Pastors are gatherers. They want to gather. Pastors are encouragers. They want to encourage. But sometimes your expectations are too much. Somebody was asking me to assist him with one millionaire when I didn't have 100,000. And after that, he left the church. We went and begged. We talked. We did everything. He didn't come back. I should help you with one million. Me, I was looking for 100,000. <laughs> Can I 
I help you tonight? The one who will not disappoint God. Your pastor may be looking for a hundred thousand. Why you are looking for one million? You better go to God. So the pastor's job is not really to supply all your needs. The pastor's job is not to play the role of a God for you. The pastor's job is to point you to God. Can I hear someone say, hey, Amen. That should be number four. Is that right? Three. Those who easily get deceived. There are some followers who can be easily deceived and swept away. There are some people that have such a mindset towards their pastor, towards their church, towards the organization they belong to. Anything you tell them about their pastor, they will believe. Anything. They have no way of believing people. They have no way of follow, following people. Anything you tell them, they believe. That's why criticisms, gossips, crisscross in churches. Those who can easily be deceived. That's why false prophets have a sway in our churches today. Anything they tell you, you will believe. Whether it lines up or it doesn't line up. In this transformation, there should also be spiritual transformation. We believe in prophets. We believe in ministry of prophets. But we believe in ministry of genuine prophets. Like prophet Isa El Bouba. Prophets that speak, if they speak of the future, that future comes to pass. Prophets that are thoroughly scriptural. Prophets that are spiritual. Prophets that keep standards. Prophets that represent God. Not prophets that represent their stomach. Those who get easily deceived. Number five. Those who take God for granted. Is it four or five? Five. Okay, let me go. Let me go. Can I go? One. Those who are easily discouraged. Two. Those who are easily disappointed. Three, those who are easily offended. Four, those who are easily deceived. Now five, those who take God for granted. One of the elements of this people here, having followed Jesus for a long time, for some time, not long enough time, that he's telling them the next agenda, and they didn't understand. One of their characteristics was, they are type of people that take God for granted. Next to it, those who are infested with spirit of familiarity, I think their problem is the spirit of familiarity. Notice, I didn't say familiar spirit. I said spirit of familiarity. Walk with Jesus, see, heard his message, seen his preaching, seen his supernatural manifestation. Now, because he allowed them too much of a closeness, they took it for a ride. He's telling them a very major thing in God's heart. And they are ready. In a very pigeon house language. Let me the sheep. May God deliver you from becoming familiar and being infested by spirit 
of familiarity. Because you are going to miss a lot. That shall not be your portion. Take God for granted. Those infested with familiar spirit, that's number six. Now, where are we? Number, number seven. Number seven is talking of those who have divergent interests. Bishop Uka. Reason why these people didn't understand. A reason why they didn't know. They chose deliberately not to understand. They chose not to know. The reason is because Jesus is speaking of dying. That's not the Messiah they were expecting. They, were, they have been under, under the Roman government for years. An imposter government and they all were believing God according to them for a deliverance from the rule of the Romans. So when they heard that a man came, multiplied fish for people who labored through the night and caught nothing, then they're beginning to have hope. Maybe that is that deliverer. Peter was at the center of that miracle. And so... I, 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 Jesus now told him, told them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So he followed. Later he found two sons of Zebedee and their father. Those ones followed until they left the boat and left the fish and left their father and followed. Peter was a little bit worse. He must have gone and sold the fish before he came back. <laughs> Along the line, Peter is hearing Jesus say different things he didn't like to hear. He mentioned this thing long ago. Around Matthew chapter 16 or so. The son of man, so he took, the Bible says he took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never you think of such a thing. Never you talk it. <laughs> the reason is because when Jesus was bent on talking it, then one day Peter asked, sir, we have left all oh, and have followed you all this while. What is our own in this thing? I wasn't there, but let me tell you the mind of Peter. Peter was thinking Jesus will become the prime minister. He will become deputy prime minister. And it is because of this that the mother of the sons of Zebedee came and said, please give us permission. My son, this left, and the other one. Let this one be minister of communication. Let this one be minister of agriculture. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. Divergent interest. And now, Jesus continued. So, they are not hearing this thing for the first time. So, they are hearing it again. And the Bible said they understood not. Neither did they know it. How? Oh! Why will Jesus do tolerance? And Jesus had flexibility, but Jesus was taking steps. Jesus was a proactive leader. Let me hear someone say proaction. Right at the time, Luke 18, where he mentioned this, he was proactive. A proactive leader is someone who sees ahead and sees that let us do certain things now that can prevent problems, can prevent crisis, can prevent force, can prevent uh, deviations, can prevent setbacks. Such a leader is said to be proactive. Jesus was proactive. What makes a proactive leader? A proactive leader is a man with foresight. Can I hear you? Can I challenge you here tonight? Thank God for what we saw yesterday. Thank God for what we see now. But we should also ask God to be able to see ahead. It is those who see ahead that make headways. He was proactive. 
So, this thing was going to give problems. The next point I want to give you is that Jesus engaged into hard work of faith. What did he do? He engaged in hard work of faith. He kept talking to them. He kept talking to them. Do, 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 as we say in Nigerian Pigeon. The hour came. Jesus took them primarily to go and pray. No matter the strategies of leadership you have, whatever you have, whatever vision, whatever mobilization, whatever goal setting, whatever you think about, please bath them, baptize them in the spirit of prayer. we ask that as a watchman, one of our responsibilities is that of intercessions. Pleading with God on the behalf of others. In this case, pleading with God on the behalf of Nigeria. Yes, Pastor Allah, we have prayed before, I hear. But can I say something? The things that are rising up now need a new determination with a new commitment to prayer. Deepen your prayer life. If you ever pray 30 minutes before, please push to one hour. If you ever pray one hour before, at a regular basis, push to two hours. If you did two hours before, push to four. If you ever did six hours before, push to six, to 12 hours. And with that, I can guarantee you, interventions will come. Peter, therefore, was locked in prison. The church prayed without ceasing. And when the church prayed without ceasing, then something happened. Number one, heavens opened. By this hour, intensive intercessions, the heavens will open again over this nation. The heavens opened. Angel was sent to that prison house. There shall be Holy Ghost sent renewal. Holy Ghost outpouring far more than before. Then angels will descend. There shall be angelic assistance in our ministries and in this nation, Nigeria. Things that naturally wouldn't have happened, they will begin to break forth. They will begin to happen. Such breakthroughs and such breaking forth that we never dreamt of shall begin to happen again in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me run. My time is up. That man is telling me my time is up. Can I run quickly? With this, the Bible said, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when they arrested Jesus, Judas brought the people. This is the last thing that created the last disappointment for Judas. He was hoping that with the way I see Jesus, if they come to catch him, he will disappear. But I've already come. So he will walk away with money. If they met him in the market and asked, where is our man? He said, did I not show you the man? My job was to show. Did I? Jesus has walked away many times. But that night was the night he would not walk away. Good. Judas said, I don't die, finish. I don't die, finish. I'm sorry. He will never come back. Peter was an irrational person. Very impulsive. He can say, come, say, come, sir. So he said, wherever you go, I will go. So he followed up to this one. He was saying like that, so it was because of his sword. No matter the battle, I will fight. So the moment they came, he took the sword and cut somebody's ear. His disappointment was, they sent Jesus he's fighting for, <laughs> carry the ear and put it back. He said, hey, you share me like this? I don't... From divergent interest 
They felt disappointed in the actions of Jesus. And now they have concluded on one thing. We will go away. This thing is paining the father. This thing is paining Jesus. Buried. Peter was not there. Even the twelve were not there. Why would the women be more bold? It was because they have seen, they, Peter, and the rest of the twelve, they are counting the disappointment. And now refuse to hang around. They went and they are now conniving. What shall we do? It was this time that Peter is already calculating how to go back to fishing business. So the women took the lead. They are the one going to check the body. So when they resurrected Mary, it's Mary who carried the message of resurrection. Go and tell Peter. Go and tell Peter. This thing we are talking about, men shall rise up. All together, we shall pursue this agenda. Nigeria must be transformed. Peter came. He entered through the grave. He did everything. I thought that when he witnessed that the body has been taken away, he will believe, he will repent. He didn't. He didn't. That's where I have a problem. He didn't. So seven days, no, Monday, they are together. They didn't gather to worship. They gathered to discuss what will happen now. The, uh, the day Jesus resurrected. So Jesus entered in that hall. Good enough. The ten were there. Thomas wasn't there. Judas wasn't there. So he showed his body. What evidence are you looking for again? Very irresistible, compelling evidence. Look at me. Look at the holes. You said there are many Jesuses in Israel, but this one, there's only one that has this hole. I am the one. After they saw, I thought they would follow. They didn't follow. So Mark chapter 16 from verse 13. Say Jesus appeared to two of his disciples. And sent them to the rest. So when they went. Those two went and told the rest. Hear me trouble. Please give me that verse. I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. Give me that verse. Mark. Give, Mark. Uh -huh. And they went and told it unto the rest. He do. The rest of them neither believe them. So this issue of somebody didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus is not only Thomas. All of them. All of them. All of them. And this is a deliberate unbelief. This is a deliberate disbelief. It's not that they didn't see. The problem that is underground here is divergent interest. We are looking for this is what we are looking for. What is called middle bed infrastructure. <laughs> what are you talking about? Man. So with that, they didn't believe at all. Verse 14. Let's all read verse 14 together. One, two, three, go. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Look at where they sat. Is it church service? Is it prayer meeting? Is it conference? <laughs> when it came to meet, they were all gather. When it came to continuity, mm, and upbraided them with their own belief and hardness of heart. Because they believe not them which had seen him after he was risen. So when he upbraided them here, they say, sorry, sorry. There is this sorry by mouth that didn't enter the heart. So Jesus to help them, then John chapter 20, 
that's the next. He did what today we call anointing service. And just after 2020, when he gathered them, he said, <laughs> Receive ye the Holy Spirit. So, me, sir, I was believing that with this Holy Spirit, with this renewal, they will stand. It is after that that John chapter 21, Jesus and Peter said, I go a fishing. We have no time. Let's round it up now. Thank God. With Jesus, he has persistence. He has tolerance, but he has also persistence. So when they went to fishing, he allowed them, they went to fishing. And Peter has backslidden, talk to me, completely. He pulled a cloak. He pulled a, this thing. He pulled even on the wheel and put on the sand. <laughs> Am I in an, he threw a bridge. And he's can, trying to catch feet. Never caught it. Then your Bible said they saw a man walking by the seashore. They, 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 they didn't know who he was. When you backslide, you will no more know who Jesus is. Even when you hear the word of Jesus, you will not know. They didn't know. So he was moving up and up for a long time. But see Jesus. Jesus said, children, if I were the one, I would not call them children. I would not. Children, do you have bread? Because their last meeting has to do with food. So let's start with food. So as to recover them. <laughs> our, sir, prophet, our ministry in today's century, 21st century in Nigeria, is dwindling because of food. Pastor will ask you, what is there in there for me? This is where corruption has entered in church. A very good church, I know. I like that church, Pentecostal day, to plant a church somewhere in the north. And they, 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 he knew they are going to send him support. They went and negotiated land. Two million. Two million. The land was going for two million. He said, he came and asked the man, please, the land is two million, but can you put in the receipt? 3.5. The man said, what? 3.5. The man said, what? So the man said, took it to his overseer. He said, sir, look at me, prophet. I've never done business like this. Somebody is saying, the land we have agreed is 2 million. And he said, I should put 3.5. And the headquarter will send it. Meaning, if the headquarter sent 3.5, what happens to the 1.5? That's where, that's where the problem is. We have stumbled over this issue of food. Issue of stomach infrastructure. And we have backslidden. May God call us to restoration. Then, when he said children, yet they didn't, under, yet they didn't understand. Then one of them. In every backsliding, there must be somebody that God will use to deliver you. One of them. The Bible clearly said the one whom Jesus loved. And you know who that person is? He said, Peter! It is the Lord. By the time John said that, Peter tumbled and entered inside water and covered the, uh, his nakedness. He said, I'm not one. Go and carry my clothes. So they, <laughs> they pulled themselves to the seaside. When they pulled themselves to the seaside, Jesus was already roasting fish. The fish they are looking for through the night, they didn't catch. Jesus, who didn't have a net, nor a hook, caught fish and is roasting and preparing food for them. Can I hear somebody say supernatural prosperity? Please stand up. Stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. Can you lift your right hand towards heaven? If you wouldn't mind, pray a very loud prayer. Say, my father, my father, help me to recover 
my zeal, my dedication, my commitment to kingdom service, my father, I arrest this spirit of setbacks. I arrest this spirit of backsliding out. Say out. Say get out. Lift your voices and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Arresting the spirit of backsliding. Arrest, arrest. La pata saburo de Zahara. We arrest the spirit of backsliding. A cabra I arrest you in my life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory and honor be ascribed unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please, let's stretch forth our hands toward the servant of God that God has used. Let's pour our heart. Let's pour our heart out in prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. More of his hand upon his life, more of the unction upon daddy's life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Empowerment of the Holy Spirit beyond the widest understanding of man. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. Glory, I do not be ascribed unto you. We appreciate you for what you have used your daddy, our daddy to do in our life today. We receive it with thanksgiving. And we receive the grace to be the doer. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please take your seat. God bless you. It is time for offering. And um, we are going to really demonstrate whether the deliverance has started from our pocket. Uh, when Pastor Gali, please come and help us take offering again. I don't know whether, yes, please come. Praise the Lord. When Reverend Pastor Gali was talking about giving offering in the morning, and he said that uh, we should go all out of our ways and just do what we don't do before. So I have usual offering that I package, that I draw. So when I took deep my hand into my pocket and I brought the offering that I wanted to give, he said, return back that offering and give what you have not been given. So I, I said, this is what he ministered to us. And I dropped the offering. I just went out and I met my daughter in the Lord. He said, she's been coming here. And she said, Daddy, you must have money for credit. <laughs> I just, not quite some few minutes, so please have deliverance of your pocket tonight because it's for your own good in the name of the Reverend Gali. Pastor Gali, come and lead us in offering. Gaza. Sorry, you are not Gali now. Yeah, thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, let's package our offering, please. I said in the afternoon that uh, whatever we are giving, we are sowing, not because 